top stories tonight in Y News. The Interagency Task Force on the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases has decided to extend Alert Level 2 status in Metro Manila until the end of February. The national government is looking to conduct a monthly nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive to ramp up the immunization rate in the country. The Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System probes the prolonged water service interruptions by Mainilet Water Services. The United States of America has issued a warning that Russia could launch an invasion of Ukraine any day now. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, February 14, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and uh, via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am Mariela Toza. First in the news, the government's pandemic task force has decided to extend the alert level to status in the national capital region while seven areas will be placed under Alert Level 3 for the rest of the month. Rosa Dicos will tell us why. Metro Manila cannot be de-escalated yet to COVID-19 Alert Level 1. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said the COVID-19 situation in the National Capital Region is still at moderate risk. Yung two-week growth rate, low risk, high risk naman yung atin uh, ADAR, at uh, 11 per 100,000 uh, population, ang equivalent yan, kung titignan mo sa matrix, ibabangga mo yung dalawa as a moderate risk. So, ano ba ang katumbas ng moderate risk sa alert leveling system? Is level 2. Okay? So, hanggat hindi bumababa yung atin ADAR na dapat umabot sa 7, yun ang threshold, or below, hindi tayo makakapag de-escalate to alert level 1. Thus, the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or IATF retains the COVID-19 alert level 2 over Metro Manila until February 28. Metro Manila mayors have also recommended to IATF to extend the current COVID-19 restrictions in NCR. Also, according to the National Vaccination Operations Center or NVOC, the vaccination rate among elderly in NCR should be increased first before further easing of restrictions. Nagkaroon na po kami ng meeting ng Metro Manila Council at nagpasa na po kami ng resolution. Ang recommendation po namin to retain ang alert level 2 until end of the month. I hindi, hindi po tayo totally dapat magbukas immediately. Kasi marami sa ating mga areas sa uh, NCA, medyo mababa ang uh, coverage ng uh, A2, yung ating senior citizen. While uh, 99% ang fully vaccinated, pag tinigit natin sa lahat ng mga priority groups, uh, kailangan pang i-push natin yung A2. Apart from NCR, major parts of the country will also be under alert level 2. Meanwhile, seven provinces in the country will be placed under COVID-19 Alert Level 3 from February 16 to 28, 2022, particularly Iloilo City, Iloilo Province, Guimaras, Sambuanga, Davao de Oro, Davao Occidental, and South Cotabato. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health has urged local government units to enforce the health protocols against COVID-19 and campaign sorties. Aiko Miguel will tell us why live. Yes, Aiko? Yes, Marielle, good evening. The Department of Health and the Philippine Medical Association has observed that campaign rallies are crowded and this is a cause of concern. Here is Dr. Benito Atienza, the president of the Philippine Medical Association. Nakita po natin, halos wala na pong distancing. Di ba? Dapat po ang distancing ay one, one meter. Dapat nakasuot pa rin sila ng mask at saka yung protocol. Di na kaya po kami natatakot nga pag inano po yung alert level. Ito pong alert level to nga. Ang dami na pong uh, parang natitipi sa minimal health protocol po natin. 
Dr. Benito Atienza also emphasized that such activities are super spreader events. Wala naman silang alcohol doon, nagtetest pag temperature na, baka niya mamaya may mga lagnat niya. But may makaatin po dyan isang super spreader, may umubo dyan, kung may sakit, makapanghawa na siya. Hindi na naman na, 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 tetis, na ano dyan kung sino yung walang bakuna at may bakuna. Hindi na, sa dami ng tao, hindi na po kayang i-control yan ng gobyerno. Mariel Dr. Atienza also said candidates should just use online platforms to campaign rather than hold events that make people's health at risk. Ang payo po lang natin, lalo sa mga kandidato, mag-online, ano, mag ano na lang po tayo muna, huwag na po muna, ilimit po muna natin, di ba? Dapat po sa alert to eh, pag indoor po, dapat ay 50% lang. Eh, nakikita po natin, mas marami pa, punong-puno. Tapos po sa labas, dapat 70% ang ano, do sa open air. The Health Department urged local government units to enforce safety and health protocols against COVID-19 as the country is still in the middle of a pandemic. Pinapaalalahan natin ng local governments, tulungan po natin ang national government to enforce and to monitor this kind of activities so that we can prevent further increase in cases if ever. And to our campaigners, yun pong ating mga kandidato, sana po tayo po yung maging modelo para maipakita natin sa mga tao na dapat sumutupad po tayo lahat sa safety protocols. Hindi po pwede na magiging pabaya tayo rito. Dahil sigurado magiging super spreader events ito, eh mababalik na naman tayo sa mas mataas na alert level uh, uh, status. And we don't like that anymore, di ba? Hanggat sa mga aray, gusto na natin talaga magbukas na ang pinakamalaking uh, bahagi ng ekonomiya. Mariel Paranaque City Local Government Unit said they will not tolerate any candidate doing such act. Here is Mayor Edwin Olivares of Paranaque City. Patitigil namin yung rally. Pag hindi sila sumunod, per protocol, ipagbigil namin yung permits, patitigil sa rally. The DOH emphasized that there are campaign rules set amid the pandemic. House-to-house -house campaigns, handshaking, hugging, and any other physical contact are prohibited since these are one of the main causes of COVID-19 transmission. The DOH said we can shift to new normal or alert level 1 once COVID-19 cases rise again due to super spreader events like crowded campaign rallies. And that is the latest live. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Aiko Miguel, reporting live from Quezon City. The government plans to conduct its massive COVID-19 vaccination drive monthly. JP Nunez reports why. Go ahead. Yes, William, good evening. Out of the initial 5 million target from the third national vaccination days, only 1.5 million were vaccinated during the latest nationwide rollout. The Department of Health admits there was a low vaccination turnout. According to DOH Under Secretary, Secretary Mirna Cabotaje, the chairperson of the National Vaccine Operations Center, they are considering to conduct National Vaccination Days every month for a specific target. Oo, iniisip natin yung iba-ibang strategy. Baka kahit gawin natin buwan-buwan na specific areas siguro o kaya specific uh, target no kita natin medyo uh, kailangan natin taasan yung ating pang citizen and book also reported that vaccinators from the LGU extend their efforts to do house to house vaccination to reach more senior citizens and ramp up the vaccination program Meanwhile, the rollout of vaccination to kids aged 5 to 11 years old has expanded nationwide starting today. The NTF reports the number of vaccinated children against COVID-19 since it started last February 7. Sa ngayon, I would like to, to report na 100,000 na yung ating na-vaccinate na, na 5 to 11. And ngayon po mag-start ang uh, nationwide ang buong bansa ng uh, ating, ano, ng ating uh, vaccination for four children. The NTF advises LGUs to designate separate vaccination sites for the said age group. William, according to DOH, a total of 482 vaccination sites for children 
were opened, including 84 sites in Metro Manila. That is our latest live. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you. JP Nunez reporting live from Quezon City. The Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System is probing the prolonged water service interruptions by Manila Water Services. Janice Ingente reports. Over 150,000 customers of Manila Water Service Incorporated will still face water service interruption until the end of February. According to Jennifer Rufo, the water interruption has been unavoidable due to northeast monsoon that has been pushing unusual amounts of sediment toward our Putatan treatment plants. Areas that will be affected are portions of Pasay, Muntinlupa, Las Piñas, and Cavite. So ito po ay mag extend from February 16 up to February 20. Kinailangan lang natin i-extend dahil bagamat yung, yung stability level sa raw water ng Laguna Lake, um, nakita po natin na yung ating production ay hindi pa makamit yung ating uh, full uh, average production na 280 million liters per day. Uh, although nag-improve naman na po. So by tomorrow, Feb 15, uh, expectation po natin na maabot na yung 200 MLB water production. However, Rufo explained their production is improving and water interruptions are shorter than scheduled. In a text message to UNTV, MWSS Chief Regulator Attorney Patrick T. said they are conducting an investigation on the prolonged water supply cuts. MWSS has warned that it will impose a penalty on Mainilad if the water supply has not been returned to normal, which their customers have been suffering for almost two months. Meanwhile, Mainilad said they are ready to face the regulatory office decision. Patuloy naman ang aming koordinasyon sa aming regulators ukol dito. No? Um, kami naman ay nagpapasalamat lang sa pagkakataon na binigay ng ating regulators para maipaliwanag din kung ano yung nangyari sa aming operasyon, um, ano yung constraints na aming hinarap kung bakit napilitan tayo mag-implement ng rotational interruptions. Ultimately, yung decision po ng regulators ay uh, tatanggapin po natin yan kung ano man ang kanilang uh, maging decision. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. For those watching our 24-7 live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Marcos Duterte tandem still leads the latest presidential and vice presidential polls released by Pulse Asia Survey. However, other presidential candidates remain unfazed by the results. Aileen Cerudo will tell us why. Presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos leads the presidential survey of Pulse Asia with 60% of the respondents choosing him as the next president of the country. Vice President Lenny Robredo followed with 16%, while Senator Manny Pacquiao and Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso tied at 8%. Senator Panfilo Lacson, meanwhile, is at 4%. In several statements, the presidential candidates in the 2022 election said it is too early to say that the results of the recent polls will also dictate the election results in May. The camp of presidential candidate Vice President Lenny Robredo said the survey was conducted from January 19 to 24, which is too early to capture the impact of the game-changing interviews with media outfits. Based on VP Lenny's performance in interviews and the number of supporters attending her campaign rallies, the camp remains confident that it will reflect in the coming surveys and on election day. Senator Manny Pacquiao reiterates that he is not disheartened by the survey results. He assures that his desire to serve the country and help its people will continue. He also added that he will continue campaigning for the future of the nation despite facing a difficult fight in the elections. What is more difficult, he said, is to see the hardships of Filipinos. For Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso, the support he sees during his campaign rallies boosts his confidence to continue campaigning. I, I think ito, the thing speaks for itself. Kaya lumalakas ang loob ko dahil yung tao, yung silent majority, Lumalabas ng bahay nila para lang masilayan tayo. 
Senator Panfilo Lacson on his Twitter account assures that his camp will continue to pursue the path that is determined, decent, serious, and honest. Lacson vows to never give up for the country's sake. For Labour leader Liori de Guzman, the survey results will still change, especially once presidential forums and debates begin in the coming weeks. His confidence remains with the Filipino people and they will side with a candidate that will provide a solution to the everyday problems faced by workers. What is needed, de Guzman adds, is for voters to hear his platforms and stand on the issues experienced by the country. Meanwhile, the Marcos's camp says the result is humbling and that the camp's message of unity resonates among the overwhelming majority of the Filipino people. It also shows that numbers don't lie. In the vice presidential survey, Marcos's tandem Sara Duterte Carpio is in the lead, followed by Senate President Vicente Tito Soto, Francis Kiko Pangilinan, Doc Willie Ong, and Lito Atienza. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, one of the petitioners has filed a motion for reconsideration following the dismissal of the disqualification case filed against presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Dante Amento tells us why. Abu Bakar Mangelen, one of the petitioners in the three consolidated disqualification cases against Ferdinand Marcos Jr. before the Comelec First Division, believes his contention is strong. Thus, he filed a motion for reconsideration at the Comelec and Bank today. He asked the poll body to reverse the dismissal of his case and bar Marcos from running in the 2022 elections for allegedly convicted with a crime involved moral turpitude. I am very confident that the Commission uh, Comelec and Bank is going to consider our contention in our petition. The petitioner is a current commissioner of the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos or NCMF who introduced himself as the duly elected chairman of the Partido Federal ng Pilipinas. Mangelen failed to attend the preliminary conference of his case. Thus, it was immediately submitted for resolution. I'm very sorry to tell you, no? I did not receive any, not any notice, official notice from the COMELEC. But then, even we did not receive the official notice from the COMELEC, we submitted our memoranda. Meanwhile, petitioners Ilagan et al. and Akbayan et al. will also seek a resort from the Ant Bank through a motion for reconsideration tomorrow. The petitioners said they are not optimistic the Ant Bank would grant their appeal, but as part and respect with the process, they need to file an appeal before the Comelec Ant Bank. They assure though their appeal will still be dismissed, the final resort would be the Supreme Court to decide whether Marcos Jr. is allowed to run or not. Hindi po kami created forever. No, hanggat hindi po napapanagot ang political dynasty ng mga Marcos. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. believes that the May 9 elections will be a chance for the economy to recover amid the pandemic. Nel Maribo explains why. The Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio conducted their campaign rally in Cagayan Province and Quezon City. In Tugegarao City, Marcos is joined by Senatorial Candidate Harry Roque and former Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile. Marcos said they are roaming around the country to campaign for unity. He believes that unity is the initial step to recover from the pandemic. Yan po ang aming pananaw na ito ang tapat na paniniwala ng unity na ang pagkakaisa ay ang unang hakbang para tayo po ay makarecover na mula dito sa pandemya, mula dito sa economic, economic crisis na danyala rin ng pandemya. The BBM Sara Unity Team also held their proclamation rally at the Amoranto Stadium in Quezon City. Their supporters swarmed the venue. Several local candidates in Quezon City also joined the team. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Presidential candidate Yodi de Guzman plans to take out the middleman in the rice industry. Dalain Moreno reports why. Labor leader Cal Yode de Guzman wants to improve the rice industry in the Philippines if elected as president in the upcoming elections. According to the presidential candidate, he will first remove the middleman who bought palay and sold it at a higher price. 
alisin natin yung middleman at uh, gobyerno na ang tumayo na magdi-distribute ng bigas mula sa bibili ng bigas mula sa mga magasaka diretso sa ating mga consumer. Nang sa ganun, mawala yung patong na mas malaki. He believes that when the government act as a middleman, prices of rice will be cheaper. The Guzman also adds the government must invest in technologies for a more efficient agricultural process. The Guzman also adds the government must invest in technologies for a more efficient agricultural process. Kung kaya nga, kahit abutin natin yung 50%, malaking porsyento nung ang ginagastos nila ay sagutin ng gobyerno. At uh, tulungan sila sa marketing, tulungan sila na maintain yung 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 pagtatayo ng post-harvest facility, then research and development para paramihin ang ating ani. Kaalio the eyes to limit rice importation and regulate rice dependency in other countries. The presidential candidate adds the Philippine economy will prosper by helping the farmers in their struggles. Kung ititigil natin yung importation, eh di maibabalik natin sa tamang presyo yung ati, yung, yung, yung palay ng mga maghasaka at kikita yung ating mga maghasaka. At kung mapaunlad pa natin dahil sa tayo mag, mag uh, invest sa research and development at kung tayo later ay mag-export, ay mas lalong lalaki ang kita ng ating mga maghasaka. Lelaine Moreno, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police were looking into the links of some politicians to private armed groups in preparation for the national elections. Dea Ilagan reports. The Philippine National Police is now validating many risk factors that may affect the May 2022 elections. PNP spokesperson Police Colonel Jean Fajardo noted that among the risks are the existence of private armed groups. Sa ngayon, marami pa po tayong uh, binavalidate na mga risk factors that may somehow affect yung uh, peaceful conduct of election. Isa na rin po dyan, ma'am, yung mga possible employment po na mga private armed groups. Fajardo added they are now working with the armed forces of the Philippines to identify any threats in the upcoming elections. Ito naman ay uh, pinagtutulungan ng PNP at AFP na masiguro na hindi po sila magagamit ng sino mga uh, kandidato o politiko, incumbent man o bago para masigurado po na magkakaroon po tayo ng uh, maayos at tahimik na eleksyon po. Kaya patuloy po yung ginagawang police and military focus operation to run after this potential private armed groups po. PNP Chief Police General Junardo Carlos assures the commitment of the National Police to attain an orderly and peaceful elections. Earlier, the PNP submitted its list of areas of concern to the Commission on Elections. The COMELEC is authorized to release the list. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippines recorded 2,730 new cases of novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19, pushing the nationwide case count to 3,639,942. Active cases stood at 76,609, with 93.8% of it are mild and asymptomatic, according to the Department of Health. Among the active cases, 69,574 are mild, 2,970 are moderate, 2,310 are asymptomatic, 1,443 are severe, and 312 are in critical condition. The DOH also reported 7,456 new recoveries, bringing it to 3,508,239 or 96.4% of the total number of cases. While the 164 deaths recovered uh, bring the total tally to 55,094 or 1.51% of the total number. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has topped 412 million. 56,317 and the deaths have surged to 5,817,341 according to the Johns Hopkins University.
presidential candidate and Vice President Lenny Robredo has apologized on the overcrowding during the campaign rally in Quezon City, organized by her supporters over the weekend. Meanwhile, she also signed various covenants, vowing to fight for the rights of various sectors should she win the presidency. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. Following the Pink Sunday campaign rally, where thousands of supporters trooped to the Quezon Memorial Circle last Sunday, the camp of Vice President Lenny Robredo has apologized for the crowding. This comes after the Quezon City government released a statement reminding all organizers of candidates to strictly observe health protocols after the event resulted in a spillover crowd that violated several restrictions that were mutually agreed upon. In a statement, Robredo spokesperson attorney Betty Gutierrez says, while the organizers assured the limited access and adherence to health protocols, the number of people who attended was a challenge. The team acknowledges the concerns of the QCLGU and takes full responsibility over the incident. Gutierrez assures that the campaign team is taking steps to ensure stricter compliance in the future. Meanwhile, Robredo made rounds in Quezon City today. She led the signing of Covenant with volunteer groups from various sectors, including the Covenant for Senior Citizens and the Covenant on Upholding the Human Rights of All LGBTQIA Plus Filipinos. Yung pinirmahan natin ngayong gabi, hindi naman ito pangako moving forward. Mahabang diskusyon ito. Mahabang panahon na pinagtrabahuhan. Hindi dahil may mga provision na hindi natin pinapaniwalaan, dahil pareho naman yung paniniwala natin. Pero sa laban kasi ito, kailangan nating pakinggan lahat. The Lenny Kiko tandem will fly to Visayas to campaign in the provinces of Capiz, Aklan, and Antique. Jorijin Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Presidential candidate Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso confirms he will continue to fight for the 2022 elections. This after an unnamed presidential bet was reported to have been deciding on withdrawing from the national bid. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. Presidential candidate Mayor Francisco Esco Moreno Domagoso aims to find the real solutions and immediate actions against the root of poverty in the nation. With this, Domagoso vows to continue his fight with his allies in the national bid amid the reports of a candidate who decided to end his campaign due to inadequate support. Hindi natin susukuan ang tunay nating kalaban. Ang tunay na kalaban nating lahat ay yung nagpapahirap sa tao. Yung kahirapan dinarama nila, yung hirap ng buhay sa araw-araw. The Action Democratico, on the other hand, continues to reach out to different individuals and groups for support to their presidential bet. The National Party says they are open to endorsements even from any individuals or organizations, including religious groups, as they rival with stronger bets. So, wala po tayong uh, pag-iitsapwera, pagpapasasantabi sa isang grupo man, o relihiyon man na yan, o kung ano mga mga sektor. No? So, patuloy po tayong uh, nagre-reach out sa mga tao at nagre-reach out sa mga iba't ibang mga grupo. The tandem of Mayor Isko Moreno and Doc Willie Ong personally visited residents in some areas in Samar today and will continue to go to other areas in the province tomorrow. They are joined by three of their senatorial candidates, Samira Gutok, Carl Balita, and Jopet Sison. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, Senator Manny Pacquiao will not back out of the 2022 presidential race. This pronouncement comes after speculations that a presidential candidate will withdraw from the contest soon. In an earlier statement, Pacquiao said he remains very optimistic for his presidential bid as he continues to gain support in the Visayas and Mindanao. I am a fighter in uh, walang uh, atrasan ito. At uh, hindi wala sa bukabukulari ko yung uh, uh, aatras para sa bayan. Uh, kung hindi nga ako matras para sa sarili ko lang, ano pa kaya yung para sa bayan? Eh, para maipaglaban ko ang sambay ng Pilipino. U.S. President Joe Biden's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has issued a warning on Sunday that Russia could launch an invasion of Ukraine any day now. Maeve and Dog tells us why live. Yes, Maeve, uh, good evening, go ahead. 
William, from Jake Sullivan's update from the White House this weekend, signs of Russian escalation can be seen as new forces arrive at the Ukrainian border this week, making a distinct possibility that an invasion could begin before the end of the Beijing Winter Olympics. As we've said before, we are in the window when an invasion could begin at any time, should Vladimir Putin decide to order it. I will not comment on the details of our intelligence information, but I do want to be clear. It could begin during the Olympics. NATO allies have reviewed and assessed the credibility of the intelligence. Pentagon's press secretary John Kirby also said that the Department of Defense's intelligence was a combination of factors. Sullivan expressed their hopes to work on results-oriented diplomacy, but the U.S. is also prepared to respond along with allies and partners should Russia proceed with the invasion. Our response would include severe economic sanctions with similar packages imposed by the European Union, the United Kingdom, Canada, and other countries. It would also include changes to NATO and American force posture along the eastern flank of NATO and it would include continued support to Ukraine. Americans in Ukraine have already been warned to leave the country and take advantage of the available commercial transport options. Sullivan says that the military action would likely begin with aerial bombardment, followed by an onslaught of a ground force. U.S. forces have also moved out and ordered the evacuation of most of its embassy staff out of Ukraine. William? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, May Bien Dog reporting live. For the first time in 10 years, nurses will be joined by paramedics on a strike protest tomorrow, Tuesday. Marvid Finn will tell us why live. Yes, Marvi, please go ahead. Ariel, the New South Wales health system is failing to cope with the pandemic and as a compromise, better health system resources are being taken into strike action by New South Wales paramedics and nurses from 7 a.m. tomorrow. Nurses are calling for minimum staff-patient ratios to guarantee that hospitals have enough nurses and midwives on every shift. Added to that, nurses are stating that the government's 2.5% pay offer per year is not enough. General Secretary Brett Holmes of the New South Wales Nurses and Midwives Association says that deciding to initiate a strike action was painful for the nurses, but is necessary to deliver the message to the State Premier Dominic Perrottet. The New South Wales Australian Paramedic Association President Chris Castellan has also expressed his frustration and the exhaustion of fellow paramedics. Matters of concern raised were the lack of support from the government to frontline workers and the request for additional 1,500 paramedics. Meanwhile, the Australian Paramedics Association have unanimously voted to initiate a 24-hour statewide ban for paramedics this coming Thursday. Marielle? Marvi, how has Premier Dominic Perrottet responded to the calls of nurses and paramedics? Marielle, just recently, 2,800 graduate nurses have started to work in 130 hospitals, helping alleviate the health system, uh, Dominic Perrottet stated. He has also acknowledged the difficulty of the frontline workers during the pandemic. Premier Perrottet is also open to review the current pay offer to further show his support for the nurses and paramedic union. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Marvin Finn, reporting live from Australia. Trevor Mallard, New Zealand Parliament Speaker, used a sound system on Parliament grounds on Saturday to blast vaccine messages from the crowd of protesters by using songs from Barry Manilow, James Blunt and Macarena on repeat. This was the government's response to the protest, which then drove the protesters to respond by playing another tune, We Are Not Gonna Take It. New Zealand anti-vax protesters were believed to have been inspired by the protests in Canada initiated by truckies. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said 
The protest is an important phenomenon and nothing that she has seen before in the country as it enters its second week. An estimated crowd of 1,000 joined the street last week to oppose the country's mandatory vaccination for doctors, teachers, police officers and nurses, including mask wearing. Swiss voters are calling for a near total ban on tobacco advertising in the country. Ruth Bahe will tell us why live. Yes, Ruth, go ahead. Yes, Marielle, nearly 57% of voters and 16 of Switzerland's 26 cantons have voted on Sunday to tighten the country's lax tobacco laws by banning advertisements of smoking products. Stephanie de Borba of the Swiss League Against Cancer was extremely pleased with the final results, stating that the people understood that health is more important than economic interests. In comparison to other countries like New Zealand, who took action in banning the display of all tobacco products at point of sale, Switzerland is far behind on restriction of tobacco advertising. This is mostly due to the influence of some of the world's biggest tobacco companies with headquarters in the country. More than a quarter of the adult population smoke tobacco products. Every year, around 9,500 deaths are linked to tobacco consumption, as campaigners blame the country's lenient advertising laws. According to the latest Swiss Health Survey by the Federal Statistical Office in 2017, around 27% of those who have completed compulsory education at most smoke tobacco, comprising of students as young as 11 to 15 years old. Most tobacco advertising is currently legal at the national level, with the exception of television and radio ads, and when specifically targeting minors. Marielle? Ruth, how has this uh, news been received by tobacco uh, manufacturers so far? Marielle, the world's largest tobacco company, Philip Morris International, has voiced their concern, stating that this is a slippery slope as far as individual freedom is concerned. However, John Paul Hamer from an addiction prevention center in Geneva refuted their statement, saying that this is not a question of freedom, but an illusion of freedom, pointing out that tobacco creates severe dependency. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Ruth Bahe, reporting live. And before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God from the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. It says, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. the reasons behind the news february 14 2022 reasons we deliver to you as they unfold i am maria latoza reporting live from australia and because we need to know we will always ask why i am william theo we serve the people we give glory to god